Hey, uh, welcome to another round of conversations in the gallery from the Old State House Museum. My name is Scott Moy, tour guide. My name is Jim Hickey. I'm a senior tour guide here at the Old State House Museum. Today we're going to be discussing Arkansas secession. But before we dwell deep into that subject matter, we need to first set the premise or the backdrop as to what events occurred that drove this movement towards secession in Arkansas. And one of the first issues that really comes to mind would be the 1860 uh, presidential election that served as the major backdrop as far as the southern states moved towards secession. And the, the element there would be the fact, obviously, Abraham Lincoln, the Republican candidate for president, seemed to drive this wedge uh, within the southern states toward the fear of the rule of the institution of slavery. Now, in 1860, around April, during the very first uh, Democratic Convention, of which uh, Stephen Douglas was uh, the majority candidate, the Southern states actually wanted to make the 1860 election a mandate about slavery. This was a no, no starter for uh, D uh, Stephen Douglas. So the actual convention convened without any, any uh, a nomination for Douglas. In June, the uh, convention reconvened again in Baltimore. During that time, once again, the southern states made this demand about making the election a mandate for uh, uh, slavery. It was rejected. The southern states walked out, including Arkansas, and nominated their own candidate for president, which would be John C. Uh, Breckenridge. Breckenridge, yeah. Breckenridge, right. Also, uh, Bell was on the ticket? Yes, exactly, you're exactly right, uh, exactly right. And I think the main lesson for like Arkansas on that is that um, uh, Mr. Lincoln was not on the ticket at all, uh, which made things even more precarious for a national election when you're looking at a situation where not all the candidates are on the same ballots in all the states. Uh, and that creates a very dangerous situation uh, for a, a, sure. a, a young country uh, that we were at the time. Exactly, and if you look at the election itself, really uh, the Democratic Party had broken apart. You had Lincoln Republican, and, and then you had, uh, you had uh, Stephen Douglas, John C. Breckinridge, and Bale. Lincoln actually won the election 39.8% of the vote, which is 40%. That's how divisive yeah. the split was. Now, even after uh, uh, Lincoln was elected president on December 20th, I believe, South Carolina? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think December 20th, South Carolina makes, makes the motion to secede uh, from the Union, and from that point you began to see other deep southern states begin uh, the evolution toward leaving the Union. But events in Arkansas, though, actually remain fairly calm at that time. Uh, because you have to understand, uh, geographically from Arkansas, is that uh, Arkansas was not your typical southern, true southern state, as you would no, find more of, a, of, of a western. We were really considered yeah. kind of the far west of that time period. Um, the notion of Arkansas being this deep southern plantation state um, seems to be sort of mythical. Yeah, more than right. Anything else. right. And uh, most people that looked at Arkansas during that time period, during this crisis, were not convinced that Arkansas was going to join the Confederacy at all. And uh, it almost uh, didn't happen And as we kind of get into this. So as we, as we look at the fact that the election's been held and Mr. Lincoln has won uh, the national you know, vote, basically, even though it right. worked out the way it did, um, things begin to kind of shake loose here. They yeah. become, they, it, it becomes a little bit rocky as to which direction that Arkansas is going to be moving. Right. Um, and so we have one of the first things that pops up is the notion of starting a convention or, or having a convention form to discuss uh, the uh, notion of seceding from the United States. Right. And, and remember, remember that actually, actually remember an excellent point. Uh, January 16th, uh, the, the, the House here in the 1836 yeah. House of Representatives yeah, exactly. actually passed a bill 
that would that call for uh, statewide elections to see if uh, we would have a convention and to also discuss secession. Now, at that time, you had two, you had two opposing forces here in Arkansas. You had the secessionists, and I think you probably agree that Rector, Governor Rector was was yeah, 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 yeah right. I would agree with that. You know, in his in one of his speeches he gave, he said, "Well, you know, we we just need to be prepared just in the event, but it's going to happen." Yeah. Basically, is what he said. He had already made up his mind, bro. He like um, <laughs> when he addressed the, the the legislature, I believe it was um, when he was giving his inaugural address. Yes, he yes. said the 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 election of Lincoln had revolutionized the country. And that, that, and, and, and I got that from the Encyclopedia of Arkansas. It's a revolutionized the country. But that's a loaded thing. It, it, it doesn't, it, I'm not sure exactly which side that that's supposed to take right. in that. Yeah. But he also basically just kind of drove home that the United States was not working out. And as far as he was concerned, it's almost as if he's like, I made up my mind and we're leaving the United States, whether anybody else wants to go or not. Exactly, and, and his supporting group would have been those plant, uh, plantation owners in the east and the southern part of the state, so that makes up the group for uh, secessionists. Then you had your, your what was called unionists, and these are pretty much the, the, north, the north and the west part uh, of Arkansas. Let me, let me interject. Um, in, in case you may not be familiar with the term unionist, um, in the South, mm -hmm. um, as this secession crisis begins to blow up, in Arkansas, you had people who were secessionists, and they're going to be the, the uh, uh, pro-Confederacy folk. And then you also had people who were unionists who are going to be in favor of staying with Mr. Lincoln and staying in the union no matter what. And so we had these two then factions breaking loose in Arkansas, the unionist and the secessionist. Yeah, and, and unionists in Arkansas that came up from, from north, up north part of the state, uh, they were unionists because they, they, they truly felt that the economic benefit of Arkansas would continue as a result of the Constitution and the federal laws that were existing and in place. They were relying on the Constitution. They were relying on the Constitution to protect the institution of slavery is what it comes down to. Now, that was a strong group, and you got to remember that most of your farmers up in the north and the western part of the state were individual farms. Uh, very few slaves existed in, uh, in the northern part of the state. In fact, in 1860, just to give you a breakdown, the uh, population of Arkansas was 435,000, and of that, approximately 111,000 were enslaved people. That's, that's 25% of our population. population. And most of that was located in the eastern Arkansas and southern, and, part. And southern, southern part of Arkansas. And we have to, uh, we, we have to uh, understand that we have to include those enslaved people as unionists, yes, um, they're going to be pro-union, and they're going to be doing what they can do yes. um, behind the scenes. These enslaved people are going to be doing what they can behind the scenes to try to manipulate things as well. Um, so unionism in Arkansas was extremely strong. Um, so the they're going uh, they're going to put a vote out yes to the people statewide. Right. about whether or not they wanted a secession convention. Right, right, and that was going to occur on February the 18th. Okay, yeah, this timeline's kind of important. I want yes. to kind of throw it up to Now, and then, because this is happening, uh, of course, uh, you know your history, you'll know about the uh, Arkansas, the Little Rock Arsenal event that occurred uh, around February uh, 5th. The well, 5th. Yeah, 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 around February 5th, February 5th. Just, just before the the convention, the convention. Is to yes um, and so well not I mean before the, the convention election yes so what we have is on February fifth we have something called the Arsenal Crisis and that took place at the Little Rock Arsenal which is now MacArthur Park um, there was a um, I th about sixty five Union troops there guarding that arsenal now if you're Governor Rector and you're pro-secessionist, you need something to try and galvanize yes. secession support um, in order to try to, you know, reach your political goals. And this is something that Rector seems to have done with the help of another Arkansas politician, uh, Jim Harrell. 
um, <laughs> during the period. And um, so what happens is suddenly this arsenal with these 65 Union soldiers, there were only 65, becomes this major threat to Arkansas. And um, it's almost as if we want to say that the arsenal crisis was manufactured. It was manipulated. Yeah, it, it, it yes. was manipulated. Because suddenly all of these militia groups moved into our, uh, into a little rock and surrounded the arsenal. And there were about like 5,000. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the yeah, numbers were. that's what were. the number had yeah, been calculated okay. at. Now, so if we go with yeah. 5,000, with just these 65 Union troops in this arsenal, you can kind of see that there's something going on here. Um, this politician, Jim Harrell, <laughs> was also a major secessionist. Uh -huh. Jim apparently, not this Jim, but Jim Harrell. <laughs> Jim Harrell was apparently in Memphis. Well, they had just gotten the telegraph yes. line set up between Memphis and Little Rock, and this is 1861. And the first, the first telegraph message between Memphis and Little Rock was sent by Jim Harrell, this Arkansas secessionist and politician. And that message said, Federal forces are moving to Little Rock to reinforce the arsenal. And Rector seems to have used that, and other people behind the scenes seem to have used that to, you notice we're using a lot of qualifying. Yes, right? yes. But to manufacture this arsenal crisis to solidify secession support in the state. Another thing on that though too, with Rector, the, the, they weren't really a militia, they were a gathering of citizens. Well. They reached out to Rector and wanted him to con uh, take control of this mass of individuals coming up to Little Rock. And Rector says, "Well, now, you know, I really, I really can't assume control over this group, but you're, you're citizens, so you can, you can pretty much do what you want to do. So if you want to come up to Little Rock, yeah. well, yeah. that's you know, your business. Yeah, that, that's you your business, business. If, you know. Yeah. And uh, all right, so I got a list of the counties that sent now." Um, as we get into this, you're going to notice that the Unionists, those are the people that are pro-United States in Arkansas, are going to kind of tend to be located in the Washita and Ozark mm -hmm. Mountain regions of the state. That being said, here are the counties that sent these secessionist groups or militias um, into the, and if you've got an Arkansas map, look at these counties. The borders yeah, may have shifted somewhat, yeah. but we have Phillips County, Jefferson County, Prairie, White, Monroe, Hot Spring, Saline, Montgomery, and St. Francis. And if you look at the locations of those counties, they're going to be eastern Arkansas, and they're also going to be sort of uh, south central Arkansas, where that secession fervor is really located. Maybe the one outlier might be White County, but uh, I know that White County has a lot of delta land up in that yeah, area as yeah, well. Exactly. And so those are the counties going to send these people. There were no counties from those Washita area, you know, and, right. and Ozark areas that send any, any groups of militias down to that area. So we can already begin to see this geographical separation between secessionists in the state and unionists in the state. And the unionists, yeah. again, are going to be located in the mountain right. regions for the most part. Yeah, and, and, and then as that group comes up to Little Rock, uh, they reach out once again to Rector, and, and Rector once again says, I can't assume com uh, command of your unit. But I'm going to send the, the Capitol Guard and the militia out to separate the groups. And so then uh, Rector reaches out to Captain Totten. Yeah. Now, Captain Totten was in charge of the 65 federal troops out at, uh, at the arsenal. Now, oddly oh, enough, Captain Totten's father, there was an Arkansas connection here, was William Totten, who was a physician who moved down from uh, Pennsylvania, and he had actually been a physician at the Arsenal when there were uh, the previous troops there. So there was that connection here with, with Little Rock. So when Rector reaches out to, to Totten uh, about surrendering, uh, Totten has to make this decision. Do, do we actually bring up a defensive position or what? He had not received any, any orders from his, his command. But the Arsenal at that time was situated where you had a lot of homes, businesses, and there was this fear there would be a damage to personal property and to personal lives. And so uh, this is just hypothetical in my part, having that connection with Little Rock, maybe thinking that maybe it would be best that we just leave the, uh, leave the Arsenal in command of, of Rector. And as a result of that, uh, the, the ladies of Little Rock actually gave uh, Captain Totten a, a, a ceremonial sword. 
Now, what's really interesting, this is a little caveat here, I want to branch out a little bit. There actually had been an artillery unit in the arsenal, which was called the Totten Artillery Unit. That was changed to Pulaski, because Captain Totten stayed in the Union Army. Captain, uh, uh, Captain Totten would be in the Battle of uh, Wilson's Creek in Missouri in 1862, and he had an artillery duel with, guess who? The Pulaski Battery. Pulaski Battery. So that's just a little history there locally. Hey, so thank you for joining us yes. today um, at uh, the Old State House Museum uh, for conversations in the gallery. Um, please check us out on Facebook, YouTube, uh, also our website. Uh, my name's Scott Moy, I'm a tour guide here. And this I'm Jim is Hickey, and we hope that you'll uh, be back with us and watch us once again in the next series.